So in this series of videos, we've talked about the principles of regenerative agriculture. Now we want to go from principles to practice, and we want to talk about how do farmers transition to a more regenerative footing. Now it's difficult to be prescriptive. There isn't a rule book about regenerative agriculture, so I can't tell you exactly what you need to do on your farm. But if I give you some ideas to take away, and I think a fundamental idea is that whatever we're growing, whether we're growing cabbages or beef or wool or wheat, what we're trying to do is we're trying to grow deep roots, big roots, because the more we grow big roots, the more we're paying attention to the soil, the more we're paying attention to extracting maximum value out of the full depth of soil. And in that way, we're trying to increase the capture of water, we're increasing organic matter, we're increasing the resilience of the system, which is really a key adaptation to climate change. So when we're talking about transitioning from our normal uh, business as usual approach to a regenerative approach, we've got to figure out how that, what that might look like for our particular system. So in the context of dairying, for example, I've worked with dairy farmers in the southwest of Victoria who have chosen to transition away from the high reliance on expensive external inputs, principally their reliance on nitrogen to drive the productivity of their ryegrass pastures. So the change there was not saying, I'm not going to use nitrogen anymore, but rather changing the way that the nitrogen was used. So that involved a shift from urea application to the use of foliar applications, liquid nitrogen, in conjunction with compost that was made on the farm from effluent and other waste products on the farm, such as hay and silage. The kind of changes then that were observed by the farmers were more clover coming back into the system. The soils were softer and the animal grazing behaviour changed. And the key to this is observation, looking at how the system is responding to the different changes and taking cues from stock. How is the grazing management changing? How are the stock performing? Are they showing any preference to graze one paddock over another? And in a horticultural situation, we're looking for changes in plant health, in pest and disease pressure, in product quality. So it's really important to take these concepts and apply them to a small part of the farm, to a paddock, to a number of paddocks, and start trialling something different here. And that might be longer rest periods for grazing, leaving longer residuals in a paddock when we take the stock off, and seeing how the system responds to that. Oversowing with a range of different pasture species, reducing fertilizer application rates, and ideally supplementing with organic inputs, spreading manures, bringing in composts, etc. So, how do we manage success? Increasing organic matter is going to be a cornerstone of improving the health of our systems. Profitability through reducing input costs is a key measure of success. Increasing yield, ideally, as part of that profitability increase is a measure of success. Animal health, growth rates, reduced inputs, reduced herbicide, reduced pesticide, reduced fertilizer use, and the farm functioning as an ecosystem. Are we seeing more biodiversity coming into our system? Are we seeing less pest and disease pressure? Are we seeing more biocontrol happening in our systems? And finally, let's talk about farmer well-being. So if we have increased profitability, if our farm is looking better, if animals are looking better, we're going to start feeling better about ourselves. But well-being is a difficult thing to quantify. So when we're talking about farmer well-being and talking about leaving the farm in as good or better condition, part and parcel of that is changing our thinking about how to achieve that. So conventional thinking about growing pasture or growing annual crops or perennial crops is about making the grass grow, making the grapevine grow, making the, the, the wheat grow. Nature knows how to make these things grow. It's been doing it for thousands of years before we came along. So the change in thinking that's required is saying, OK, nature is doing this. It doesn't particularly need me to do it, but I can maybe do it a little bit better. I can maybe increase productivity a little bit by applying fertilizers. But I think we have started to over rely on these inputs, thinking that that is the only way we're going to make the grass grow. 
Regenerative agriculture is not about not using these, these powerful tools. Regenerative agriculture is about sympathetic and strategic use of these tools. So it's about, yes, use nitrogen, but maybe not quite as much or in a different form that we've traditionally been using it. Maybe using it in conjunction with organic inputs. And when we start doing this and start seeing how the system is responding to this, perhaps with biodiversity, with more clover coming back into the system, with other plants coming back into the system, we're allowing nature to develop the system in the way that nature intends. When we can start working with natural systems in this way, that's when real well-being, when real feelings of satisfaction start to arrive, we realise we're working with nature and not against nature. And I'm encouraged by one farmer saying that he doesn't live on a farm anymore, he lives in an ecosystem.